Brahms wrote the piano quartet in G minor um, in his 20s, which is a wonderfully subtle and uh, very original in sound piece that has a, a fantastic mixture of emotion. There's some real darkness in the first movement and tragedy, but then the finale is a gypsy finale, which was a kind of popular cafe music, in fact. It was sort of the jazz of its time. So, cut to a hundred years later, and one of Brahms' biggest fans is the pioneering modernist Arnold Schoenberg. And he details some of the progressive elements, what he thinks were progressive elements in Brahms' music. And somewhere in all this, he was maybe at loose ends a little bit, and he said, I'm going to orchestrate the G minor uh, piano quartet and make it into something in the order of Brahms' Fifth Symphony. I'm going to blow the whole thing up for full orchestra. As, as Schoenberg realized, the, the original quartet really kind of strains for something bigger that was common in early Brahms. It's as if uh, Robert Schumann said uh, early on that his piano pieces are veiled symphonies. They're bigger than the instrument. So Schoenberg felt that this piece kind of kind of strained for the orchestra, so he would orchestrate it. He'd make it into a symphonic piece. The Piano Concerto No. 1 is Brahms' first big ambitious orchestra piece. It was a piece that he began as a two-piano sonata within days of Robert Schumann throwing himself into the Rhine and trying to drown himself. If you put this, the beginning, the really alarming beginning of the first piano concerto, high drama, high, rope, high passion. If you put that with a cinematic image of a, ma a madman hurling himself into the river, it would be just right. There are these kind of banshee howls and an absolute um, atmosphere of alarm and tragedy. But he drafted this first movement for two pianos and then he tried to turn it into a symphony and then he s had a dream one night, this is, this is true, he said this, in which he was playing that piece as a piano concerto. And he woke up and said, that's what I'm gonna do. And here's the thing, Brahms's conception already of a concerto is quite different than classical concerto as devoted to the past and to classical form as he was. Uh, it is a massive symphonic dialogue between a soloist and an orchestra. And when the soloist is sometimes making as much noise as the orchestra. But because this piece was so original as a concerto, so big, so ambitious, so symphonic, that's why when Brahms, premiered, when Brahms played the second performance in Leipzig, at the end, as he described it, three pairs of hands were brought together and then he was hissed off the stage. It was the biggest fiasco of his life and it changed his life. And he said, I'm never doing that again until I know exactly what I'm doing. And that was many years later, about 15 years later, with the first symphony. Then he was ready to say, yeah, now I know what I'm doing. But the piece, by the end of his life, he heard applauded everywhere. Uh, it, it became a triumph. It really redefined what concertos could be. And it's a passionate and fantastic piece, unqu not quite like anything else he did.